Hi everyone, uh, welcome back to Information Economics. So today we will start our introduction about um, the analysis of information asymmetry. And today we will start by introducing you the screening theory. So I'm going to explain the ideas in a few videos. In the first one, I will talk about the basic introduction. And then I will talk about one example to illustrate the idea. With that example, we will start with the analysis with complete information as a benchmark. And then we will tell, talk you, uh, tell you about the incentive issue and one important thing called the revelation principle. With this principle, we can analyze and solve the situation with uh, in, um, incomplete information to find the so-called second best optimal solution. And then we will do comparisons to get insights. That will be the main message to deliver to you in today's lecture. Some technical thing will be put in the appendix and we will not talk about it in the video. And I put them in the appendix only for you to uh, as a reference. If you want, if you prefer, if you are interested in, you may take a look about that or discuss with me um, when you want to do that but we do not require you we do not require you to go through the proof okay let's start so <coughs> we want to introduce you the idea about information asymmetry and you have you already had some idea about it when you read your case one right there we introduce you something called uh, adverse selection uh, moral hazard those are important types of information asymmetry in, uh, in those examples in supply chain. And of course, information asymmetry may happen in all kinds of in, uh, environments. So we will discuss that with a lot of different examples in this course. Today, uh, we start our introduction by talking about the so-called principal-agent relationships. So what's this? In our model or in the environments that we talk about, there will be one principle. This is one player called principle. And one or multiple agents. Okay? Agents are also players. So what's the difference between principle and agents? Principle is the one that designs a mechanism or contract. The principle offers a mechanism or contracts to the agent. And then the agent will choose their actions according to the mechanism or contract. So sometimes we also call them the mechanism designers and followers. The principal is the designer and the agent is the follower. Okay, Like in the examples of supply chains, uh, maybe the, a company is the principal and its employers are agents, employees are agents. Maybe a manufacturer, an upstream manufacturer is a principal, and the downstream retailer is an agent. Okay, Actually, you have seen a lot of these kinds of examples in the context of supply chain um, management. Okay, So that's principal and agents. We study principal-agent relationships in particular when there is information asymmetry between the principal and the agent. Uh, just one remark, sometimes we may have multiple principles competing for a single agent. Okay? For example, if there is a very strong retailer who is willing to only sell products from one manufacturer, then multiple manufacturers may need to compete for the agent's collaboration or delegation. Okay? So this is called the common agency problem. And it is very uh, complicated, so we will not talk about that in this uh, in this course. Basically, we will only focus on problems with one principal and one agent. And then, there are two kinds of asymmetric information. As you know, the information the, the hidden thing may be either the information or either actions. If the hidden part is a, inform is a piece of information, then we say there is an adverse selection problem. If that's actions, then they are moral hazard problems. So, 
just a quick review about the difference between information and actions. Information is something that the agent cannot decide or the agent cannot choose, cannot alter. But act for actions, the agent can make some decisions. Okay? So, for example, uh, consider a manufacturer and a retailer. For the retailer, if the retailer can choose its own order quantity or retail price, then that's actions. Okay? That's actions. And as you already know, typically those actions are non-contractable. So, in some sense, they are also hidden. The manufacturer can observe those actions, but the manufacturer just cannot control or cannot contract upon those actions. Okay, those are actions. What are information are something that the retailers know, but the retailer cannot decide. Like, um, how popular the product is, how the market likes this product. Okay, those kind of market knowledge is typically hidden information possessed by the retailer. The retailer knows how the market likes it, or the retailer has this knowledge that is better than the manufacturer. Okay, but the the retailers just cannot decide how the market like this product, so that will be hidden information. Okay, so we have these two kinds of uh, asymmetric information. From the principal's perspective, if it is a adverse selection problem, then there are also two different kinds of adverse selection problems. The first kind of adverse selection problem is called the screening problem. This happens when the agent has some private information. Okay, so uh, like in the manufacturer retailer example, if the manufacturer is the principal, okay, the contract designer, and when the retailer has some private information about the product popularity or how the market like this product, then we say the manufacturer, the principal is facing a screening problem because the manufacturer cannot tell the agent's private information. On the other hand, it may be possible that it is the principal that has some private information. In that case, we say it's a signaling problem. For example, uh, again, manufacturer retailer. Sometimes the manufacturer knows more about its product quality, right? Uh, the manufacturer really knows the production process, the quality of the raw materials, or the inspection processes. So the manufacturer knows more about product quality than the retailer. But because the principal, the manufacturer, has no way to, guarantee, to, to, to say to the retailer about the quality, so the principal faces a signaling problem about how to convey the quality information to the retailer. Today, we will only discuss the screening problem. For signaling, we will leave them, leave the discussion to the second half of this semester. And by the way, you already see some more hazard problems, right? Because um, in our manufacturer retailer examples, in for example, the return contracts, those retailers' actions, as long as they are non-contractable, we say there is some kind of moral hazard problem, okay? As long as the manufacturer, the principal, cannot control or contract upon the agent's some uh, actions, we say there is a moral hazard problem. And then there is incentive problem about incentive alignment or induce the agents to do something or something. Okay, that's something you are familiar with. Today we will talk about the screening problem. So, uh, why is screening really a problem? Let's consider the following example. Consider a buyer-seller relationship. Suppose there is a manufacturer who wants to buy a critical component of its product. So this particular raw material comes from a supplier 
which is called the seller. So the manufacturer finds a supplier. The supplier really produces this product, and the manufacturer knows something. First, there are two kinds of technologies that can produce this component. Okay, and um, the more advanced or modern technology can produce this product with a lower cost. Oh, there is an old technology which produces the product with a higher cost, and a new technology. Which produce the product with the lower cost. However, the manufacturer just does not know which kind of technology is owned by the supplier. So, the manufacturer knows that it's either the new one or the old one, but the manufacturer does not know which one. Now the question is, how much should the manufacturer pay for each product, for each component? So the problem is basically like this: as a manufacturer, he always prefers the price to be as low as possible. If the manufacturer knows that the cost is low, or the supplier is using the new technology, then of course the the manufacturer will try to set the price as low as possible, right? If the cost is ten dollars, the manufacturer may really ask for twelve or eleven dollars, as a very low price. However, the supplier will always try to claim that his cost is very high. Okay, no matter whether the man the supplier is using a new technology or an old technology, the supplier will always say. Come on! I have so many orders to do. My cost is so high. The materials are so expensive. If you really want this product, I really need to pay a lot to produce them. So you really need to compensate me a lot. The supplier will always claim that the cost is high. In this case, this is exactly something about adverse selection, right? The manufacturer does not know. The re the supplier's cost, and because of that, the manufacturer is facing some issue about bargaining power. If the manufacturer really knows the cost, okay. If the manufacturer really knows the production cost, the manufacturer is at a great advantage about bargaining for the price. But the manufacturer does not know. And then the manufacturer will want to find a way to screen the supplier's type. Here, screen basically just means to know the supplier's type. If the manufacturer can know the supplier's type, obviously the manufacturer is having more bargaining power. And in expectation, we expect the manufacturer to earn more money. So. As we mentioned, an agent will always try to hide his type. Here, the type is just that piece of information that is private, and privately owned by the agent. Typically, that type op- must appear somewhere in the agent's utility function. So, the 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 agent cares about that piece of information, but that is hidden to the manufacturer. Uh, to the Principle, okay. So, in the previous example, the manufacturer is the principal, the supplier is the agent, and the unit production cost is the agent's type. To give you more example, for example, one guy is selling the product to many consumers, and the man the the seller does not know how to charge each consumer. Because the consumer's willingness to pay is hidden, the seller knows that uh the best way to do is to charge each consumer exactly how much he is willing to pay, but that's impossible because the type willingness to pay is hidden. Or as an advisor, I would like to assign some papers for my students to read, right? But unfortunately, my students' reading ability is somewhat hidden, so I cannot assign them three papers or five papers to read in each week, because they are unable to do that. However, that's actually my belief, because my students will always tell me that 
they are unable to do that. Five papers are too much. To read each paper, it will take them、um, two weeks for doing that. They just cannot afford five papers a week. Probably, my students are actually so smart and so excellent. Probably, my student can read five papers in one day, but they will never told me that. They will always tell me that to read one paper, they they need two、uh, two weeks or whatever. Okay, so because my students' reading ability is hidden to me, I am facing the question of I don't know how much is the best to assign to my students. Okay, so that's another screening problem. So very easily, you may find a lot more. Examples about hidden information or specifically screening, and I hope that you will try to spend some time to think about more examples by yourself, and think about whether that piece of private information really help the agent to some extent. So, suppose the manufacturer, or sorry, suppose the principal knows that there is a private information problem. Okay, so how may the manufacturer deal with that? Obviously, the first thing to think about is to become more knowledgeable, or for the principal to get more information. Okay, I may, for example,、uh, as an advisor, hold an exam for my students to show their reading ability, and if they are too If their English ability is just too poor, I may, for example, uh, kick them away from my lab. Okay, suppose I really do that, I may get some more knowledge about their, uh, reading ability, and that is something we call information-based approach, right? The pre the probably the best way to deal with private information. Is to learn to obtain those private information. That's going to solve the problem completely. Of course, sometimes that approach is not possible, right? So if that approach is not possible, I am going to try to find some other ways, and that's going to be so-called mechanism design approach, or in the business world, contract design. What does that mean? I know there is a piece of private information, so when I design a mechanism or design a contract, I would try to design that so that I can find my agent's type. Okay, I will design a contract or a mechanism to offer to my agents, and then I will observe what my agent do. What my agent respond according to my contract, and then I try to find their actions, find their types according to their actions. So today I will tell you how to do that and what's the outcome of doing that. We will start from the easiest case. That will be the model we study in this video. Is that the agent's type type has only two possible outcomes. Therefore, we call this a two-type model, or we say there are two types of agents. If the agents are the supplier we just mentioned, then the cost may be low or high. That's two type. For my student, their English、uh, reading ability may be good or bad. That's two type. We're going to assume that the agent's type has only two possible values. In today's video, and with that, within that framework, we will try to analyze it. Our results can, of course, be modified so that when the agent has more than two different types, we can still handle it. But today, we only talk about two types. Thank you.